All right, welcome to a special podcast. We have me here in Ohio, and we have Kate. Actually, I don't know where you're at. Are you in Georgia now? I'm in Georgia, yep. All right, flying through Georgia. Driving along. On our way to Tampa, Florida today. Just going down there to meet up a friend and um, scope out some potentials and go to a conference, and it's going to be really, really fun. And this is, you know what I was talking about with the boys, this is their first time you've got to have a trip away in 10 years without us or with the, about the kids in tow in some form. Am I right? Uh-oh, she's driving in Georgia, and so looks like her connection is going bad. So anyway, I'm super excited to be able to let her go and do this. Whoa, she just picked up. <laughs> it like super oh, fast you... forward on my side. Oh, that's funny. I was just going to say, mom reminded me of the one day trip we took to Tampa. It was you, me, without the kids. That was the only other time we've been without the kids. Yeah, and that was just a one day, and that was fast. That, there yeah, was, was no so no rest or no real even time yeah. to debrief afterwards it was go go yeah yeah and i know there's probably other people out there with kids that feel that way especially homeschooling families and it's not that you don't love them mm -hmm. but you really don't ever have debriefing time or time apart or um in this case i'm be being filled i'm going to go to a conference and be filled again with the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, because that's what the word says to do. Yep. And um, I I haven't done that apart from my kids in a while. And I think that's good too. I want to, them to see me filled and things like that. But mm -hmm. there is a season and times where you do it, just you and the Lord, your relationship, right? Right. Yeah, everyone. Remember, wasn't it, uh, which was not pastors of Church Next Door that told us that uh, for a healthy life of our own, to have scheduled time each week even that was just by yourself to pour in, let God pour into you and do things that would rebuild yourself and not just continually be pouring out. Right. We haven't always won at that. Sometimes we fail. A lot of times we yep. fail because life gets busy and we don't prioritize it. That's really the reason, that's really what it comes down to is you prioritize what's important to you and you can always find something that you can replace things that are important but not urgent with our downtime doesn't feel urgent that we need it but we notice when we haven't had it in a while and you can think about your own reactions we're going to jump into gentleness in a little bit here and i gotta say i am way more prone to react with a gentle spirit or in fi finding the good in every situation in every person if i've had some time to do what builds me up, to be who God's created me to be and not just focused on others. Would you say the same for you? Um, I think so. I get fed from others. So sometimes a long time is like emptying for me. So um, I get mixed on that, you know. True. Study <laughs> which does when i'm one with the lord i do miss for this you know definitely um that's just me you're more fed around nature right yeah going for a walk just being by myself uh I, like kate said spreading out your bible and actually having time to study and just not for the purpose even of doing a service but just no. for personal growth and connection. Yeah. Inviting the Holy Spirit into this this time where we're going to dive into uh, even a word. Take gentleness. It's kind of fun. When we start diving in, we, we always thought, at least myself, when I was growing up, I was thinking, why do they have gentleness and kindness in that fruit of the Spirit list? They're the same thing. If I'm going to be kind, I'm going to be gentle. And if I'm not being gentle, I'm not being kind. So I don't know understand why they would be listed separate and in this in this time where we'll be teaching I've been able to dig into it a little bit more 
and there's so much more depth behind those words when you get a chance to study and it's super fun. So we're gonna give you some bullet points in that so you don't have to do all the study, but I would highly encourage grab your concordance, grab your Vines dictionary, grab some different translations and invite the Holy Spirit into a time of discovery of what these fruit of the Spirit really are because he's gonna to reveal to you some powerful uh, presence, focus, things that he wants to be through you for your family, for yourself, and for everyone around you. It's really, really huge. All right, before we go yes. any farther though, Patrick, can I tell him my story about goodness? I don't think I told it on the podcast yet. I told it in this week's classes, but I haven't said it on the podcast. Okay. All right, so I was at... Um, uh, I was at UPS, I've been loading some trucks uh, on the side. And so we have one manager that is known to be a little more disgruntled, it'd be the kind way to say it. And so he came by and uh, he was like, hey, this uh, driver clocked in early because he's clocked in, don't you dare load another package on his truck. He's gonna have to do it himself. It's up, if he's logged in, he's gonna load his truck and he walked away and I was like really are you sure because this is just gonna put these trucks out later and he's like yeah don't touch a single box and he starts to walk away pauses comes back he's like you know what I don't want to be that guy now let's let's knock this out let's let's help him out and let's uh let's get this truck ready for him so when he comes back from the meeting he's in he's ready to go and I was like what in the world what happened why did that change come from? And uh, as, as soon as I was thinking that thought, it was like the Holy Spirit popped into my heart. Hey, that was him harvesting the spiritual fruit of goodness in your life. And I was like, what? That like blew my mind. Because you think about the fruit of the Spirit for yourself. And, I, and even though everywhere in the Bible says that it's for others, I always thought of it as it my action should affect it and in this it was really just by being by me that God's presence was able to affect his disposition and attitude towards others but we've seen that in, in other people so it shouldn't surprise me like brother Hagen would say if you're riding in the car with him you no sickness or disease will have any presence or, or ability to affect your life you won't have a single symptom while you're with him and we, there's tons of testimonies of that being true just by being by him and so why should it surprise us that if we can really jump into who the spirit wants to be through us that these things would begin to change and influence our environments and the people around us even without us even trying or, or having to teach them a lesson or coach them through how to hear the spirit literally just by us allowing the Holy Spirit to lead open the door for the Holy Spirit to affect so much more than I could have ever imagined. Well, that kind of just wraps up all of the fruit of the Spirit, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I love that because it's like the point is when we're led by the Spirit, it's not just for us. Right. It is for the increase of the kingdom and the influence of His Spirit making change not us making change. Right, which is why because we- Sometimes we, things... we- Oh, go ahead. We can get so confused or cross, um, you know, when we say the natural and the supernatural collide. Well, that's true in that our natural should be completely surrendered to the supernatural mm -hmm. because it's there that there's power to change the natural. Right. And that's like so, so good but sometimes we get confused that that means we have so much to try to do in the natural mm -hmm. but if we're led by the supernatural by the fruit of the spirit by the gifts of the spirit it is he that influences change it is he that brings power right. for what he wants done right mm -hmm. and i love that because it's like you said not coaching not not that he did, couldn't grow from coaching right mm -hmm. renewal of the mm -hmm. mind and whatnot mm -hmm. but in that moment it was the spirit that provided the ability for the power to do what was right yep yeah and that brings a whole new level of understanding of of verses like zechariah 4 6 it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit says the lord um it's 
I mean, that's that's really boiling it down. I didn't have any power or might going into that situation. It wasn't me trying to influence even at all, but it was really literally the change happened by his spirit simply because I've had made myself available to, to move by him and speak by him at work. That was it. Yeah, I love that. All right, so then, we're gonna, oh, go ahead. I just say, but that takes us right into gentleness mm -hmm. and what we discovered there, right? Yeah, so gentleness, the difference between gentleness and kindness, kindness means, um, let me pull it up because I don't want to slaughter it. Kindness means re meeting real needs in God's way and in God's time. Gentleness, on the other hand, is a whole lot to do with not our being soft in our actions, but being soft with our words and our outlook towards others. Not in a not in allowing ourselves to get a hardened heart or a hardened viewpoint or perspective towards someone, but really finding the best in every situation in every person. And, and even in our connection with God, the Bible talks about gentleness. And so it, it's it's not just doing what he wants, but choosing to have a good attitude in the middle of it. Sorry, I'm talking to the road. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being gentle. I'm being nice. gentle. <laughs> so I think that is so, so fun to think of gentleness as um, not an outward, like we, we talked to our, our daughter about being gentle with a cat. It's all about her outward physical actions when the fruit of the spirit is really talking about a gentle perspective towards others. I think that's super fun or yeah, even ourselves really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. Cause we don't think of meek today as a uh, power statement for leaders. You know, we are <laughs> right. in a day where it's like, you have to be a good leader and leaders lead and you know and all this yep. we don't think of one of the fruit of a good leader being meekness and it's actually i believe one of the largest lost fruits is mm -hmm. you know it's a biblical principle you puff up yourself then it's yourself that will be puffed up you know like mm -hmm. this is this is not what we want to do we want to um i almost missed my exit <laughs> <laughs> and I caused the person to behind me to realize they almost missed theirs. So they switched. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, okay. Can you still hear me? I can still hear you, but we can't see you anymore. Okay. That's because my um, map took over. directions went down. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's always good when yeah. directions go down. On now, AIP. Google, it's yeah now their new tactic is every time i leave that window it stops the direction no way so that was doesn't a nice really? thing but oh that's a fun experience. yes it does every time yeah so <laughs> you know new adventures yeah um but i just love that um and i believe with all my heart that this is some No, I think we just lost her in the middle of her statement while she's switching lanes and getting off exits in, I'm guessing she's close to Atlanta right now, which that can be a fun, uh, fun bunch of fun interchanges there. Making sure you take all these exits just to stay on I-75. It, it's pretty fun. So anyway, so let me hit this again. Goodness is being gentle towards others. So in preschool, even elementary, we talked about not in allowing ourselves to be mean or stay angry with another person, but choose to return to that that gentle outlook towards them where, where we begin to treat them kind. We treat them gentle. We have a, uh, we find, we have a good attitude towards them. What sort of really comes down to it. I know a lot of kids, this is one thing that they can really struggle in. Uh, one of the one of the biggest um, tools that the enemy uses to defeat this within us or try to to um, stiffen the fruit of the spirit of gentleness is comparison. When you get into comparison, you no longer are able to 
um, find the best in every situation because now uh, you can you, no one ever compares themselves equal with somebody else it's always they're way better than or they're way worse than either uh, develop a attitude that's not good that's not healthy towards other people you're, you're either seeing yourself more highly than they are and then you have you're more pompous and you don't have a good attitude towards them because you think um, they need to get their act together or you, they need to let you run their life because you know so much better not that we as parents ever have that kind of temptations or more lowly I can't do anything right I'm always failing look I don't compare to them look how much they have look how they are hearing the Holy Spirit I don't hear the Holy Spirit that way so I must be a, a epic failure right now and so that you compare yourself amongst yourself is not wise that's what the Bible says and so that would be one of the biggest hindrances to walking in gentleness or allowing the Holy Spirit to develop that fruit within ourselves so I would say one of the e easiest ways to help our kids begin to have this gentle spirit towards themselves and towards others is really nipping comparison in the bud that's going to eliminate a lot of the situations and it's hard even with as parents because we see that in ourselves we're, we're comparing ourselves all the time we're comparing our yard with the person next to us we're comparing our vehicles with the person next to us we're comparing our everything and making sure we want to be just at least a little bit above status quo hey she's back and when you do that it totally kills your ability to have a gentle outlook on life and on yourself and towards others because you're always in this battle to be better than others that's the opposite of gentleness so I was just talking about comparison is is almost the antithesis or one of the enemy's biggest weapons towards having a gentle spirit and so the best way that parents can nip this in the bud and be able to develop the or sorry to develop the fruit of gentleness is by nipping comparison in the bud and usually when they do that they recognize how much in their own lives they're being led by comparison yeah and re re reminding our kids that true leaders lead the way christ says to lead and it's mm -hmm. an upside down kingdom yeah and meekness is a fruit of a leader led by the spirit because i don't boast right. about myself here right i don't mm -hmm. gifting or forefront of fruit the spirit is presenting in them with my right. own because right. I am content to live the way the spirit is leading me to live. Yep. And that means I'm going to put the spirit in the forefront always, including in others, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is easier said than done, right? Don't get me wrong. Right. You're, you're, it's like, oh, that sounds really good, you know, but it's a constant retraining and surrendering of the flesh, which mm -hmm. I don't know how much you've got before I switched over was why I believe there aren't a lot of fruitful mentors in today's society because people are so concerned about propelling themselves forward. And I'm talking about Christians mm -hmm. are so concerned about putting themselves forward or protecting their leadership or um, their, the show they're putting on uh, yeah. that they're not concerned about being meek and gentle with others that are in desperate need of what the spirit inside of them has for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes and me if, think about what Jesus says. If you want to be great in my kingdom, you must be the servant of all. It's the upside down kingdom. And we see it played out. I, I know I've shared it on the podcast before. It's been a few months. So those of you that are newer listeners, you probably haven't heard this, but in Japan, there, there was a construction company that for 1500 years, can you imagine 1500 years was the premier construction uh, company of the entire island. Everyone knew you'd go to them. You know why? Because someone would get to their top skill that they, they would hone their skill for 40 years, they would be the best at whatever it would be. And then they would have protégés, apprentices, they would help them start off at that level. And so then they would hone their gift, get better at it, figure out. And so now their top is way up here. Well, then 
after their 40, 50 years, whatever, they have protégés, apprentices joining them, starting off from their peak. And then it just continued to be this huge, huge momentum so that there wasn't any comparison and they were able to do ridiculous things as a construction company that no other construction company could until it because was they passed it on generation to generation right. too. And yeah. then it was around the fifties, I believe 1950 or so where the generation that had came up, uh, had been misled by the thinking that in order to be great, you have to prove that you know more than anyone else. And so the, in order to keep that status, you can't pass on the things that you've learned, uh, to others. Otherwise, they may get better than you. They may get paid more than you. You may lose your job because you're not a necessary part of the company anymore. And so in one generation, they lost everything. And they actually uh, were went into bankruptcy and were bought by another company within uh, the next generation because they they had plummeted so far just because they chose to not have that gentle outlook on those coming up under them instead that they saw meek, them as yeah. the enemies trying to take their position and steal their knowledge and and excel higher than they had could ever in their 40 years where instead that's the whole point of it and i that's one of my biggest frustrations with the american church too is because you see these people that have spent 40 years and God's given the gift of intercession. And so they've been honing this gift and developing it. And then they, they pass on before they put, before they bring others up in that. And we lose all of that momentum that the kingdom of God had through that one person that could have been passed on to, to 20 others could have shaped, started to shape generations to step into that level of intercession plus more. And think about all the yeah, and that's why I love, or whatever. That's Go why ahead. I love using the word disciples as interns. The point is you are pouring as much as God has put in you into others and being willing to receive from them whatever God's poured into them, right? Yeah. Yep. I was just listening to Brother Hagen and he's like, I was I would God would call me to churches that have bashed me from the stage and my message, <laughs> not believing it. He goes and I would throw fits and he'd say, you go. And he goes, and I would sit there and I would say the truth. And wouldn't you know, you feel that pressure from behind, but I'm just going to be presenting what I know the Lord has told me is truth. And they would stand up and tell their congregation they were wrong and listen to what God's saying through me. He goes, but I just had to be faithful not to think of myself so much that I wouldn't go there because they were judging me. But I thought more about what God had to say than how they would treat me. Yeah. And he said the same thing would happen when he'd listen to a message and he'd hear something that he didn't agree with. And he said, I just wanted to turn them off. I thought, no way. That is so wrong. And the Lord said, oh, really? You know so much. And he says, oh, that's true. That's true. I do not. I learn more every day. He says, so I tune back in. And when she knows through that preacher, I got an answer to one of the questions I had wrestled with for 16 years with the Lord. He goes, uh -huh. but if I would have turned them off because I decided I knew more, yeah. I wasn't going to listen to my spirit anymore, then I would have never gotten that answer. And yeah. I thought that was so good. And the same goes in parenting and in mm -hmm. churches and in Christianity. And it's so funny when we're teaching kids, we'll let our kids watch anything. It seems like not we don't, but a lot of families <laughs> do. True. And then yeah. you'll, you'll put out a Bible class and you'll get a hundred questions from a family who doesn't filter what their kids are watching, listening to, or reading. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> but, you, but you'll put a Bible class out and they're like, well, what do you believe about this? What do you believe? They won't put them in the Bible class and allow the Lord to take out the tares and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, harvest the wheat, but rather they'll decide that we don't believe the same. So they can't put them in that Bible class. And, and so it just blows my mind. Tares in the lives of their kids instead of having the potential of some good and some bad or all good. And it changes their mind on or perspective on, on what the Bible things. really says. Yeah. You right. know, one of, so it's funny. Mm -hmm. I'd have to say for parents that have their kids enrolled in Root Bible Academy and pause for a second. If you don't have your kids enrolled, 
you are missing <laughs> out. This has it's been it has so, been so good. good. And the number of coaches that we have pouring in the life of the kids is continuing to grow, which adds new times that your your families can jump on. And it's just been so, so good. So it's pre K, pre-K preschool all the way up through 12th grade now and it has been dynamic so one of the stories i was gonna say we didn't get to in root classes showing gentleness from the bible is really ananias with saul who had, was in the process of turning to paul so remember paul, he was saul he's persecuting the church he's going to damascus to jail or even kill those that said they were of the way or were basically christians he would try to coerce them into misspeaking or saying something that he could twist into not lining up with the word and then put them in jail or find them or, or even be part part of the team that sees them put to death, which is crazy. And so he's going to Damascus. You know the story. He has this big light shine. He's blinded. He goes and he's uh, just fasting and praying. And God speaks to Ananias to go um, heal uh paul who were saul. saul at that point and and ananias had to choose to have that gentle spirit towards paul even and though weakness. Yep. he was he was known for persecuting the church and ananias even says that in his response to god wait are you sure because do you know you know what he's done to the church and and god says no i've chosen him i'm going to show him uh how much he can suffer for me and accomplish for me. And so Ananias is like, okay, I'm going to have a good attitude in my obedience to God. I'm going to have a gentle spirit towards this guy that doesn't make sense to my head, but it does can I to jump my in? heart. Yeah. Not to mention a gentle spirit towards the Lord, a right. leader for years mm -hmm. who has devoted his life to the Lord. And now the Lord's asking him to go heal who he's called to carry his message, who was just attacking it. Mm -hmm. and I mean, I'd say, oh, go ahead. And be kind of a for the Lord, right? To go calling me. Why can't I do? You know, well, I've been. Right. Just, why do I have to heal him <laughs> so he can do it? Right. Yeah. See in yourself with. Uh, I've been following Christ forever and you're picking him yeah. out. Are you kidding me? I'd say that and yeah. the opposite you can be seen in Jonah. Jonah obeyed God when he was forced to, but he never got to that gentleness towards uh, the other city, Nineveh. He never got to the place where he was, he was having a great attitude towards doing what God had called him to, or even to the people that God had called him to. And so those for parents in Root Bible Academy, or even if you don't and you just want to communicate about gentleness with your kids, those are two great stories to go over with your kids and find out what God wants to speak to you and your family about gentleness through those two examples. I think we just lost Kate, but we got to start wrapping this up. I want to say one last thing. We, God has been blessing Root Bible. We are having so much fun. Kate right now is going to Tampa for a conference. We have a new Root Church starting uh, in California, which is super cool. We are starting a new coaching uh, session with a children's ministry that I'm really looking forward to. And God is doing some amazing things. And I couldn't be happening without our amazing partners helping us reach this generation to reach families oh i'm being invaded there's a little girl who's up and can see her mommy on the screen Sorry. Oh, now we got all the kids all right i'm popping my headphones out so that they can hear you wait is this supposed uh -oh. to be a meeting or what yeah we're just finishing our podcast recording whoa look your shirt just totally disappeared because you're wearing a green shirt that's crazy hello i think we lost mom did she I don't know what's going on. So this is the family. If you're a partner, you're supporting this troop right here. And we have some huge plans from God to do some amazing things. All we need is a few more partners. So consider partnering with us today so that we can continue to strengthen and equip families to grow together spiritually. Even when they got crazy here like this girl who just woke up from a nap. 
All right, that's it from us. We will see you all later. Bye, everybody.